Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking about African violets. I'm going to show you what's been happening in my collection, what African violets are in bloom. I asked you in Friday's video if you're interested in that and some of you were really interested. So we're going to go through my collection yet again, see what happened. We have some new additions that I would like to show you guys. I have some stuff that I'm planning to do, kind of exciting stuff. So with that said, let's get started with some new additions to my collection. So when I say new, I don't mean super, super new. I have all of these for about two weeks or maybe a little bit more. I just didn't have a chance to film it just yet. So I ordered all of these leaves off of eBay from a seller that I just discovered. I'll link you to the seller down below because I'm very, very happy with the product actually. So based on one single order, I can recommend this particular product. Anyway, so what I purchased from him was a sort of a bundle. He is selling some bundles of 10, 20, 30 leaves or varieties of his choosing. And being that I don't really have many semi-miniatures or miniatures, I decided to go for the 20 leaves or 20 varieties bundle of his own choosing. Pretty much surprised me because I don't think I'm gonna have any doubles. And of course I didn't have any doubles and I received all of these. Now the product is not 20 leaves, but 20 varieties. So each packet, each variety had two, three, four, even five leaves. A few of them had only one leaf, which I suppose is because the African violet didn't really have too many leaves to spare. They're not old leaves, they're very, very good leaves. I'm really, really impressed, I have to say. And I got two varieties bonus. So I decided to put all of these directly in soil because the little petiole is so tiny that if I would put them in a glass of water, they would just fall in really. So I decided to take a chance and put them directly in soil. I've had some bad experiences with this in the past, but I had no choice. I see though that in two weeks or three weeks, none of them have faded, so that's great. And I'm very, very excited and curious about what's going to sprout and how they're gonna look like. Let me just show you how pretty and interesting some of these leaves are. Look at this one. There are quite a few with these very curly leaves, which for some of you who are not new to African violets might be like, yeah, it's common, it's nothing special, maybe, I don't know. But to me it is, because I really never had anything like this. Look at this one. Look how curly it is. Most or all the African violets I ever had were standards. So to me, it's something very, very new. And I really liked the idea of a surprise bundle, right? You didn't know what you're gonna get. So if you're just starting the journey with African violets and you want to not spend a lot of money, oh, by the way, do you know how much I paid for all of these? 20 euros. So yeah, it's a very, very affordable way to start off your African violet collection. It's gonna take a while because the leaves have to root, have to sprout babies, the babies have to grow, but within the year you can have flowers. It's not like orchids. So definitely you can find sellers in your own territory, not just on eBay, which sell leaves and you can start a considerable collection in a very, very affordable way. If you have a little patience, then you're set. And there's another fun thing that can happen when you are purchasing African violet leaves, which is sporting. Yes, some babies will just not look like the parents. It doesn't happen very, very often. As far as the article suggests on the internet, to me it happened twice already. I purchased African violet babies, not leaves, and two of them sported, which I'm happy and not so happy about because I really wanted the original variety. But anyway, this is one of them. This one was supposed to have some pink specks as well, but it doesn't. In this case, I cannot say I'm super incredibly happy about the mutation. In another case, I did get one which is rather rare, and this is a chimera. Look at this flower. It has this pinwheel and stripey effect to it. This is not very common in the African violet world, and chimeras cannot be propagated through leaves, meaning if I take a leaf from this one now, it's not going to look like this. Probably it's gonna have one of the two colors. I will experiment it for the sake of making a video, but yeah, these things need to be propagated through baby plants, because otherwise it will not bloom like this. But this one was not supposed to look like this. It was supposed to have a different pattern. And when I purchased it as a young plant, the seller had no idea how the young plant would look like. As far as he's concerned, it will look like the mother plant. But no. Out of all the hundreds that maybe he propagated, 
mine, I'm not sure if others, but at least mine has sported. So I was kind of lucky in that regard. So when you propagate African violets through leaves, there is a chance that some of the babies will just not look like the parents. They might even look a lot better than the parents. However, as far as I understand through my research, this happens more to Russian or Ukrainian varieties or to the very, very hybridized varieties. So if you take a, I don't know, 25 year old African violet like my mom has and you multiply it through leaves, I don't think you'll get a sport all that often. In all of these 25 leaves, my mom never ever got a sport from those African violets. And she propagated them so much. I think she filled the whole block <laughs> with African violets. All of her neighbors have African violets from her. They never sported. And my guess is that those violets are just not as complex. They're old hybrids. So I think their gene pool is just not as complex as some of the new varieties that we have on the market. I don't know, it's just my guess. But there you go. Sporting doesn't happen all that often with very old varieties, I think. But I think it kind of happens a lot more often than you'd think with new varieties. And speaking about new varieties, let me just show you what is in bloom finally. All of these plants have been purchased as baby plants, not leaves, at the same time with the leaves. So they were very tiny, but they had time to grow. These guys grow very fast. And some of them are in bloom as well. So first of all, my pride and joy, this is LF Freezing Rain. You're gonna have the names on the screen right now. They are translations in English because most of these are Russian or Ukrainian hybrids. I do have a few that are not. Typically, when you have a name that starts with two initials or three or one, typically that is a Russian or Ukrainian hybrid. And of course, the original name is totally different since this is an English translation, but I really am not good at pronouncing that. If you Google this name though, you will find the original translation. And this one is just amazing. Such a beautiful and luscious plant, isn't she? The plant itself is not super huge. So this display is even better because the plant is not big. Next to it, we have BR Provence. And look at this, there is a very big difference between these two. This African violet looks a little bit more similar to the typical varieties you find in flower shops size-wise. It doesn't have very, very big flowers, but it has this really beautiful peach pale pink. It is a simple flower, but it has these ruffles on the edges of the petals. And it's just beautiful because it makes a lovely contrast with the very dark foliage. In the back there, this one just started to bloom. It is called the S Shining Bell. And isn't it gorgeous? Now, fun fact, when these guys first open for a few days, they're not fully extended. After a few days, the flower reaches its full size. So if you have an African violet, which has a very, very tiny flower, fear not, it might actually open up more as time passes. Now on camera, this one looks rather blue. It is not that blue. It is an indigo color in reality. The first one that I showed you is a purple and this one is a different shade, but it's not blue. It's more like indigo. I really, really love this lighter edge that you see and also the shape of the flower. Can you see how different it is? Really, really beautiful. I was about to say Rekid, African Violet. Next to it, we have the one that's sported and this is a variegated variety with the name L.E. Tristan. Now I do wanna repurchase this one if I find it because the original flower should have had specks of pink, should have been one of those fantasy patterns, but it's rather a solid color. But I'm hoping that the next flowers will be a little better. Sometimes with African violets, it is like with orchids. The first flower doesn't always reflect how all of the flowers will look like. So I do have quite a few more buds on the way. I will keep you up to date. I'm hoping it's not a sport though, because I would absolutely love to have the original flower. I love the foliage though. It is really, really nice. Next up, this is Rob's Pewter Bells. And can you notice something interesting? The shape of the flower. The flower looks like a bell. It doesn't fully open. And I think it's wonderful. Now this one does have a pale bluish, pale purple, let's say, hint to it. On camera, it might look bluer than it actually is, but it's not as indigo or as purple as the other African violets. There are many, many shades with African violets. Also, what's interesting with this one is the variegation on the foliage, the shape of the foliage, and the African violet itself. It is beautiful. And this one grows really, really, really lovely. 
I pollinated or actually cross-pollinated some of these flowers. They're on their way out, some of them, but I do believe I have a seed pod here. So that's why you see the little tags, because I cross-pollinated them. Next up, I need to change a little bit the camera settings for this one because she's so light colored. This is, um, what are the initials? R.S. Gerbera. Um, this is the name of a flower. I'm not sure in English how you'd call it, but it does look like one. This one just opened, it might get a little bigger than that. And again, do you see how beautiful the shape is? How the petals arrange themselves? It absolutely looks like a Gerbera flower. The color is not a pure, pure white. It has a peach undertone to it, but it is lovely. And it makes such a beautiful contrast with the leaves. I have quite a few more buds growing and on the way here. And yeah, I'm looking forward to having multiple flowers in bloom because they're just so big. Here we have the bluest, let's say, African violet. Again, it is a first flower. The next flowers might look a little bit better. Now, this one still is not a true, true, true blue, but it's coming very close. Unlike the other ones, which had a hint of red in them, this one has very, very little red. And to the eye, it can actually pass as blue, but it's not true blue. Anyway, the ID for this one is L.E. Aramis. And this one should look just slightly different. It should have another row of petals. I think it will have, I think this is just the first bloom that is not, let's say, full capacity or full potential, but I do love it, even like this. It looks gorgeous. On the second row here, we have the Princesa Turandot, which is the first one to open. And oh my goodness, look at these flowers. This is the first flower to open. I kind of scratched it a little bit when I pollinated it, but it's still in bloom, you guys. It opened, I don't think a month ago, but definitely three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. How long do these flowers last? I think I posted a picture of it on my community page. I'll take a look and see. but. It feels like it's been three weeks, at least, since this flower opened, which is remarkable. So look how beautiful it is. The flowers are huge, they're ruffled. This baby pink color with a darker edging is just to die for. And of course, I cross-pollinated this one with LF Freezing Rain because that one is a very vigorous hybrid, has beautiful flowers. This one appears to be vigorous. It has this beautiful shape. I don't know what's gonna end up. I wanna create my own hybrids, see how that goes, but we'll see about it. This one has curly leaves and it is quite large, but it's worth it, it's beautiful. Here is my Chimera. This is L.E. Nastia, which is not supposed to look like that. And I searched the African Violet Society page for registered sports and L.E. Nastia has no registered sport. And I looked on Google a little bit. There is another picture of a sport of L.E. Nastia, but it doesn't really, really look like this. So I might actually go through the process of registering it which will be fun to film and fun to talk about, I think. And since I cannot have my name, not my name, but since I cannot name any new orchid because I simply do not have the patience to hybridize them, maybe I can name some African violets. So I'm trying to create my own hybrids, but also you can discover new varieties if you get a sport. And this is not only a sport, but a chimera sport. And I've never seen on the internet such a big flowered chimera. I don't know, you guys let me know. If you know more than me about these things, let me know in a comment down below if it's even worth it. I'm gonna try it. I mean, I'm gonna write to them, show them pictures. I need to propagate it three times to see if the gene is stable, but I'm gonna go through the process. It's fun. I'm going to document it for you guys. And yeah, there we have it. If there's no other like this one in the world, then, oh boy, I'm gonna share it with the world. But yeah, who knows? Maybe I'm just dreaming right now. Next up here, we have a miniature. This is Max Live Long and Prosper. And the beautiful thing with this one is, except for the flowers, the foliage. Do you see it is rather elongated and it is variegated? Let's look at it from above. It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? And I do believe the flowers make such a nice pop of color, such a nice contrast. I know that there are a lot of pink African violets, but it never gets old which is such a different attitude. If you know me and orchids, when I see pink orchid, I'm like, oh, here we go again. I have a hundred pink orchids. But yeah, with African violets, 
It just kind of works. I really, really like this miniature. And as you can see, I don't have many miniatures. These are all the miniatures that I have, all of these. So that's why I got the miniature leaves because they're beautiful and they don't really take up a lot of space. Next to it, this one only has one flower right now. And I'm not sure if this creates only one flower per stem or not. Maybe it's because it's a first flower. I can see some other buds developing. But yeah, as you can see, we don't have many other buds, but take a look at the shape of this one. Yes, it is supposed to look like that, it's normal. That's why I purchased it, because it has this beautiful shape to it, which I'm not sure if it is a wasp, I don't know if I should call it like that. I'm still learning about these things, but I just had to have this beautiful shape in my collection. And next to it, we have one that I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like that. It looks a little bit like a wasp, I don't think it should look like that. Satori, as far as I researched on the internet, it should have pretty normal flowers. This one I got as a gift, I didn't order it. Whenever I order something, the sellers just put in one or two extras for me, which is so cute, so nice. And this one was a gift and it looks really, really pretty. It is variegated, it is a miniature, but I don't know if these flowers should look like that. They're interesting, so I'm letting them be. They look a little bit like a wasp. Um, I have to say, not my favorites, but it is interesting and I really love the foliage. So these are the older African violets in my collection and of course they had more time to produce buds and here are the newer African violets which have buds but they're not in bloom just yet. And here we have our propagated leaves which I will make a separate video for because I do have to remove the babies. And I would prefer to do so in a separate video so stay tuned for that. And there, there are just some new acquisitions. I decided not to put them directly into the pots because I don't know if they're gonna be large or tiny because all of the violets that I purchased are like that and then they grow up to be like that. So I could put them in a tiny pot, but then they will outgrow it within two weeks or three weeks and I need to repot again. So what I decided to do is just keep them in some jars, see how much they will grow and then pot them in their final pot, let's say. And also you can see two bigger leaves. Those ones were gifts in my last order and I'm pretty sure they will be very, very large violets. I think the largest violet that I have is that one over there. This is huge. And I tried to keep it in a tiny lechuza pot. Oh no, it wasn't working out so great. But all of them started out as tiny babies. So I'm not sure how much they will grow. That's why I decided to first put them in glasses and then choose the pot for them. And that is about it on my African Violets. Very exciting new, let's say, part of my channel. I do want to integrate them with my orchids, which by the way, this week will be a very interesting one because we re not redesigned, rearranged the growth space. So I will make a tour of the growth space. I think this week, stay tuned for that. I'm not yet finished. I'm spraying everybody, so that takes a while. And this weekend I did so many squats that I'm just done, my muscles are over. What was I saying? African violets. Yeah, I do wanna start this hobby as well because it gives me something that orchids cannot give me because I don't have the patience. Even though I love growing orchids and they're my first love, I cannot really propagate them so easily. And more importantly, it's not easy to cross-pollinate them, obtain hybrids. I'm not even sure when I'm going to see the first blooms of my hybrids, even if I send the seeds away. Anyway, it's a laborious process, which is not easy for home growers. So I don't want to film something that I know not many people will be able to succeed in doing. But cross-pollinating African violets, propagating them and doing all these fun stuff that gardeners do, well, that's super interesting for me and everybody can do this at home, even with the store-bought African violets. And it's just fun. So I think the two plants really complement each other well. I do have a lot of space in my grow space for both of them. So yeah, I do want to make more videos on African violets and the different aspects of the hobby. And if some of you guys will be interested in that as well, I'm happy. So with that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great weekend and you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, but also African violet videos. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.